you know, since I started trading, Mondays aren't that bad anymore. Not really. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Monday. This is June 12th. Now we're going to do what we always do. We're going to look at stocks under five bucks. Those are penny stocks. But I'm looking for penny stocks that have potential. Those are hot penny stocks. And when I go looking for hot penny stocks, I do it by looking at the charts first. I don't even concern myself with the findings of the news until I find a chart that has heat. Now what's heat? Well, maybe a setup for a breakout or lots of volume coming into it, or maybe a surge that just is going to the moon and doesn't look like it's going to quit. Well, once I find the heat, then I go rummaging around through the filings in the news presses, looking for that catalyst, looking for that match that's going to set that chart on fire. Put that on my list. At the end of the day, I whittle that list down and I share a few of those stocks with you because of time constraints. Well, today I've got a few of those to share. And when I'm done, don't go anywhere because I got an extra for you. So the first stock we're going to take a look at is GEGI, Genesis Electronics Group. Now we have looked at this company before back in August and October of last year. They had come out with this new concept, this autonomous vehicle that goes from road to rail. It moves the semi-trailers of trucks onto itself, drives them down the road. When it gets to the railroad track, switches its wheels so it can be on the railroad tracks, flies down the tracks till it gets to where it's going, changes its wheels again, gets on the road and drives to its destination. Pretty hot idea, isn't it? Well, they've done a lot since we've looked at them. They have made partnerships, they have had purchase orders come in, and they are working on their factory right now. So me thinks it's time to look at them again. This is ticker GEGI. She finished a day at a great low price of 0019 and just about 12% gains. She's on the pink tier, she is current, and she's got both those green ticks I'm always dogging you to look for. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. So she looks solid. Now, I've already told you what this company really does. You've got to see the picture. So let's check out the relative volume for the company. Go, oh, we've got a big increase, like almost 300%, going from almost 23 million to 63 million. Checking out that share structure. Oh, it's not a good one. Ouch. Outstanding share count, 2.1 billion. Looks like our float, probably 1.3 billion. If you do the math, subtract the restricted shares from the outstanding, that gives you the float, and that looks like what we've got there. So we've got a real high float of 1.3 billion shares. Financials for Genesis Electronics are nil. They're not making any money annually. They're not doing anything quarterly. That's why this news is real important. You can't make any money until you have a factory. You can't make any money until you have purchase orders. And the news covers both of those. Disclosures for the company, we've got nothing current, not since April of this year. The news has all the catalysts for us. So we've got lots of things happening over here. First, we've got two partnerships that occurred. The partnership with Portland-Vancouver Junction Railroad, which was announced in April, and another one here that was announced in April. This one tells us that Genesis Electronics Group announces first customer and strategic partnership. Taylor Transport signs letter of intent to become the first customer of Glide Technology. Taylor Transport is a transportation and logistics company headquartered in Vancouver, Washington, owned by the Labaki family. Taylor Transport has been a foundational business moving freight and materials around Washington and Oregon for the past 25 years. Mr. Labaki is the president of Taylor Transport, and he says, When I first learned of the Glide technology, I was blown away. Having shipped goods and materials for the past 25 years, I never conceived that a technology like this would be available in my lifetime, let alone that our company would become its first customer and strategic partner. Mr. Labaki continued, I am fully providing access to my site facilities, and equipment to help bring this great technology to life. I care about our plant and community, and I want to become the first company in this region to use this technology to ship goods from road to rail. And that other partnership, Portland-Vancouver Junction Railroad, same thing. 
They're allowing this company to use all of their facilities, all their properties and rails, and this one has a lot of benefits to it. So we see a lot of excitement. People want to be a part of this. Then we've got a piece of news that came out in June. Genesis Electronics Group announces new rail testing and safety inspection capabilities on its gliders. Since they're already going to be on the railroads, they've created this device that can check the railroads, measure them, see if they're working right. Do you know that last year there was 720 derailments and most of those because the railroads were in bad shape? Unbelievable. This is usually all done by people walking down the railroads actually taking measurements. Can you imagine how labor intensive that is and how much time that takes? Then their last piece of news is big. This one came out today. Genesis Electronics Group announces manufacturing partnership with BART Manufacturing. They tell us here that Genesis Electronics Group announced that it has signed a binding exclusive manufacturing partnership agreement with BART Manufacturing Inc. to build the Glide units. Glide and BART also confirmed that a production of all electric Glide units is projected to start at the end of summer this year. Once final joint design for manufacturing activities are completed at BART's world-class manufacturing facility in Stockton, California. So we've got a facility. We've got two places we can be testing our equipment and actually using it. We've got our first purchase order and we've got a hot chart. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Chart of We're going to jump on into that chart of GEGI. This is Genesis Electronics and we're going to do our charting on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. Now that's a 6 month 4 hour view. We've been here twice before, as I said. September 26th, she was at a price of about 0037, and she ran up here to 0084. So we had well over 200% run there. Second time we looked at it, really bad timing. The worst, actually, soon as we looked at it, the very next day, she fell and fell hard. And she's fallen all the way down here to a low of 0005, which she did at the beginning of May. And she didn't do a whole lot after hitting that low. She stayed underneath her 50. She got one incentive bump here, telling us, I want to climb. I don't want to stay down here anymore. She got on top of her 50, on top of the 9, and she started running on June 2nd. She's on her 9-day SMA, just floating to the moon right now. You can see the volume is starting to come in, and all of our oscillators are pushing up or on fire. So everything looks really sweet on the 4-hour chart. 20 day, one hour. Not a whole lot of difference there. We can see that when she took off on her nine day here, when she fell, she fell down to her 20 day SMA. Did not come down to the 50, she's hanging around the 20. So she's still light and buoyant. She doesn't have a lot of weight to fall. Things are looking good. She hit a high today of 0021 and fell back to that 0019. Oscillators are tempered right now. They've all kind of cooled off. Looks like it is waiting for this 50-day SMA to come up underneath it and give it another push. Five-minute, five-day view. So our low on the five-day view is 0013. She's been on top of the 200 all these five days. She did bounce off of it a few times. She's sitting on it right now. She seems secure. It doesn't look like she wants to come down. I'm thinking on that one-hour chart, that 50-day SMA coming up could be what this is all about. She's waiting for that and then probably going to take off. Oscillators are... Uh, they look like they're trying to recover right now. Everything is just now starting to come back up very slowly. But it's worth a watch. G-E-G-I. You've got partners, you've got purchase orders, a manufacturing put together. Everything is coming together right now. It only needs you. Hey, here's something we haven't done for a while. Look at a warrant. This is ticker EACPW, Edify Acquisition Corps. Now this is a SPAC. Edify Acquisition Corps ticker is EAC. Normally for a warrant, you just put a W or WS behind the company's ticker. For some reason, they use PW here. Now, this is a SPAC. A SPAC is a blank check company that comes onto the market with no business, no revenues. They just secure a ticker and they're looking to make a deal. They're looking to make a merger. And they'll have two things on the market. Their stock, which is normally $10 a share, and their warrants. Now, the stock is worth $10 until they close a deal. 
People don't bid up the stock when news comes out because it's only worth $10. A SPAC has got 18 to 24 months to make a deal, close a merger deal, and if they don't, Believe it or not, they give the money back to the investors, $10 a share. So nobody wants to bid $10 up to $11 in case it doesn't work. They're only going to get $10 back. So when news comes out, instead of the stock moving, the warrant moves, which is why I like to play the warrants. When they have a catalyst and a hot chart, you can get a huge runoff of these things with little volume. And we got both with this. Now it is a warrant. Don't let that scare you. A warrant is a stock you can get in, get out anytime you want. But it has the added benefit of being used as a coupon, a promissory note. You can use these years down the road and cash them in to buy shares of the company stock at a much discounted price, a guaranteed price, which is why most people like warrants. But me, I like them for the day trade and the swing trade potential. And this company right now has got both, Catalyst and a hot chart. EACPW finished the day at about three and a half cents with almost 21% gains. Now this is her catalyst. Edify Acquisition Corp files registration statement Form S4 in connection with the proposed business combination with Unique Logistics International. Unique Logistics International is on the OTC market, UNQL, and they expect to close this second half of 2023. We're in the second half right now. Now the big deal here is that the S4 is the final block. This eliminates any if, ands, or buts about the deal going through. So it is big news, but the stock isn't gonna move hardly at all. It's going to be the warrant. Now what I wanna show you is what makes this UNQL so special. It's the money. They're making all kinds of it. They are exploding here, folks. 2020, they did $115 million. We know it's millions because we got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. 2021, they more than doubled that to $371 million. By 2022, they were doing over a billion dollars, almost tripling what they did the year before. They are literally growing at leaps and bounds, and the stock is only at a penny. Now, I think when this stock gets up onto the NASDAQ, making this kind of money, being in front of people who have money, they're going to see the value and it's not going to be under the radar anymore. That's the whole deal here. Now, I am primarily interested in investing in the warrant. If you want to consider this stock, do your own DD. But I see the value here. Do you? Let's go take a look at that chart. We are looking at the warrant for Edify Acquisition. This is ticker EACPW. This is a six month, four hour chart. And as you can see, it is an atypical breakout chart, right? You've got your 200 day SMA right here coming down like a ski slope, leveling off down here at the bottom and the price trying to break through. Very easy to identify. These are the sort of charts I'm always looking for. Now she's had a lot of volatility here, some huge dips and huge rips. Hit a high in November of just over 12 cents and came all the way down to triple zero five in January. And right now she is trying to break out. She is trying to get up over that 200. She bounced off of that 50, cracking at once, and she's come back down here just underneath the 200, but on top of her nine and on top of her 50. And the volume is increasing. Right now, all of our oscillators are pushing up. They're all looking good. We've had a crossover on our PPO, percentage price oscillator, and one on our MACD, and the green bars are accumulating. RSI is a little cool. We're at 55. That's as cool as I do want to see it. 20-day, one-hour view. Pretty much just going sideways there. We do have a high here of almost six cents and a low bubble of two cents. She cracked the 200 here, cracked the 200 there, but really isn't doing much. Now, something I do need to tell you when you're trading warrants, don't expect the volume that you see on stocks. Nowhere near. However, it will run farther and faster on less volume. The reason for that is the ask and the bid. I want you to pay extra special attention to the ask and the bid. This is where people make their mistakes. The bid may be at two cents. The ask could literally be at 18 cents. Somebody will come in and buy it at 18 cents and you'll see the price jump and you'll go, oh my God, I just made 900% gains. 
Hold your horses there, cowboy. Go check. I'll bet the bid still says two cents. Normally, it takes two or three buys at that new high price to confirm it before it changes. So before you buy or sell a warrant, make sure, confirm the ask and the bid are what you want them to be. Looking at that five day, five minute. Not a whole lot going on until today. She jumped here from uh, just under three cents to just under five cents. You're looking at about 60% gains. She fell at lunchtime down to a 20 day SMA at three and a half cents, and she is stuck there all day. I would have thought she'd have moved when the 50 day came in, but look, she's underneath the 50 now. But I got to tell you, there's no liquidity with most warrants. It's not like you see the volume come in, getting less, getting strong. It's just on and off, on and off. So you got to watch for those pops. EACPW, she could surprise you. And our final stock was a last minute change up. This wasn't what I had prepared to share with you. I was going to share with you Cellularity, ticker C-E-L-U. They've got a hot catalyst and they've got a hot chart. So it is worth your due diligence. But what I want to share with you right now is one I found at the end of the day. Hi, hi. Ticker H-I-H-I. This is Holiday Island Holdings. Now, actually, I didn't find it. It was introduced to me by Velmore, one of my dear followers. She is always finding hot stocks. I don't know how she does it. I should recruit her. Well, Hi Hi had some explosive news come out today and it exploded the charts. She finished today just under four and a half cents and just over 726% gains. And folks, that ain't nothing. Would you believe she had nearly double that on the table today? Almost 1,500% gains, all because of this news press. She is on the pink limited tier, which isn't a good thing. This means they are late on one or more of their financials. And we'll get into that when we look at the financials. They do have a verified profile and a transfer agent verified, so that looks good. But this shell risk being tagged to her, that doesn't look too great. That means they're in business, but they're not making any money, which is the case. So what does Holiday Island Holdings do? Well, they tell us they are a development stage company involved with recreational, residential, and commercial real estate acquisitions, management, and development. So what was the relative volume around this news today? Huge. It looks to be, oh, I don't know, like maybe 90 times her normal volume, going from 35,000 to just under 3 million. That it is a huge jump. Share structure for this company is beautiful. We've got a low float. I did verify this. I did it for Velmore. That's how I know. It is just around six million. So we have a low float and I'm sure that helped this stock to run today. Financials for the company. They have nothing. They have nothing on the annual. They have nothing on the quarterly. The news that came out today though, changes all of that. And I think that's why the stock ran. You start throwing around big dollar figures, people get excited. Disclosures. This is where we can see our pink limited problem. Looking over here, you can see what they're missing. This is going by threes, three, six, nine, 12. So they've got everything here, but where's the first one for 2023? We're missing that. Plus, we are missing our attorney letter. Every annual report has to have an attorney letter on the pinks. So we're waiting for the attorney letter and the first quarter for 2023. They need to get those in ASAP. All right, let's take a look at that hot, hot news. So the first piece of news we're looking at comes from September last year. Holiday Island has entered into an agreement to acquire an oil and gas interest estimated at a half a billion dollar return. And finally, we get news on that deal. Today, Holiday Island has finalized an agreement with XA Interactive Inc. to recapitalize the company initially with $150 million in assets. Here's the news. The company, operating in the recreational remote living real estate market and other commercial properties in the geographical markets of Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Louisiana, and Florida, 
announced today that the company has entered into a finalized agreement with XA Interactive, a privately held firm specializing in oil and gas operations to recapitalize and grow high high. High High will pass control of the public company to XA in exchange for an undisclosed amount of cash. The roll-up of XA as a wholly owned subsidiary will initially put more than $150 million in assets in High High's books. XA currently operates more than 100 active and producing oil wells with aggressive plans to develop approximately 500 more over the next 36 months. So you've got a business coming in that is making money, that's going to pour money into this company and start generating revenues. That's everything everybody wants. The company's making no money right now. Now hopefully they'll get these filings in and we won't have any problems. Everything looks hot, 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 including that chart. That is the six month, four hour chart for High High Holiday Island Holdings. As you can see, nothing has been going on for six months. Absolutely nothing. She's been dribbling downhill underneath her 50 day SMA, underneath her nine day SMA, going nowhere but down. Until today's news, she erupted, jumping from double zero four all the way up to almost six and a half cents. It was a tremendous run. And as you can see, the oscillators are on fire. And every single time you look at is pretty much the same thing, flat with a nice run. So what we really need to look at is that five minute, because what's going to happen? Well, we had that takeoff in the morning. She hit her high here, came back down hit the 20-day SMA, fell up underneath it, and right now it looks like she's on a fall. She's underneath her 9, underneath her 20, and we don't have a 50 or a 200-day SMA here. Oscillators look weak. They are all pushing down right now. This just came out today. This is the first day people have had a chance to look at it and play it. Tomorrow, a lot more people are going to be looking at it. People like you who are now hearing about it from me. This is worth putting on your radar because she's got a low, low float and she's had a huge jump today. We don't know what could happen tomorrow. There could be a continuation and it's worth your attention. Ticker H-I-H-I. Hi, hi. Hey, you hung around. Glad to see that. I'm still here. I'm just not on the screen. I want to save all the room for the charts. This is what I want to share with you folks. Through the day, I do a lot of research. I see a lot of hot charts and I can't share them all with you. We just don't have the time. So I'm going to go through some hot charts right now and show you real quick and easy what I look for. Now, some of these have catalysts, hot catalysts, warm catalysts. Some don't have any catalysts. But keep in mind, with a hot chart, you only need the smallest of catalysts to get it to run. So this is Lottery. You're familiar with them. They've been going through some hard times. But as you can see, her chart is ready to break out right now. Now I'm going to give you full size charts here because there are three things I look for that are very important. One, I'm looking at the price. I want it near that 200 breaking out or just about ready to break out. I would love to see a lot of volume, but most important are my oscillators. I want my oscillators on fire and pushing to the moon. BFI, she's already breaking out. All the oscillators are strong. Volume is a bit thin, but it is there. Looking at Nicola, ticker NKLA. Look at this, folks. She is set up for a breakout right now, and the volume is thick and congested, and all of her oscillators are pushing high and strong. This looks excellent. Looking at MCLD, she came under her 200. She's about ready to break through it again. What we want to see is this 50-day SMA, the yellow one, start to curve back up just like our oscillators are doing right now. Keep your eye on this one. This one could shoot sneakily. The next stock, INTK, a perfect atypical breakout chart. 200-day SMA coming down, leveling out with the price sneaking up underneath it, looking like it wants to go on top. The volume is getting thin here, but our oscillators are getting stronger. AXIM, she is breaking out right now. 
volume isn't real thick, but we have it there, but the osculators are getting hot. Next stock is ALLG. She had a hot day. The volume was nil for a long time. It got strong today. We had a big strong push and all of the osculators had that push as well. Don't know what's going on with this one, but something happened. Another one, AASZF. She is breaking out right now. She had a strong day, bouncing all the way from her 50 through the 200 and staying above her 200. Volume was very strong today and the osculators are heating up fast. Two more, RXT. She has just gotten on top of her 200. She was sliding downhill on it, but here comes the 50 crossing the 200 day SMA. That is a golden cross, one of the strongest signals you're gonna find on the charts. That is occurring now with the osculators bouncing and turning around. And the very last one we got is MESA. MESA, ticker M-E-S-A. She is trying to break out right now. Volume was very strong today and all of our osculators are just now turning up. This too could be a surprise tomorrow. Remember folks, there's a lot of due diligence you can do on any of these stocks, and I encourage you to do it. The more you know, I know you can't see me, but I'm winking. The more you know. See you folks. <laughs>